Last week, two weeks ago, I was on the show and we had a couple of people pick pick Baylor to win again the Big Twelve. Well, you, did you talking about me? <laughs> I <just brought> it <laughs> up. This isn't a Big Twelve game. Just for the record, that's not a Big Twelve game. So that is still <laughs> true. The Big Twelve. I'm just I'm just backing up Adam. If they're in the league this year, now what? Yeah. Yeah. No, okay. Yeah. They're not though. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 we, hey, we, we can't. Coach Sean was taking, you, taking notes over. He's taking notes on the picture. Oh, I, I there, pay right? attention. Right? <laughs> you, got, you don't no, think I, I do, s- but I do. No, I just, listen, I saw you go over there and you were on the computer and you're like, what did he say this other time? And okay, <laughs> yep, I got him. And you were like, got his ass. <laughs> I got it. You got me. No, so we're going to, let's stick in the Big 12. Let's talk Oklahoma. Do we think that they're going to win the Big 12? How do we feel about this offense? Um, Adam, I know you've been watching them. I think that, you know what? Here's what I want to start with when it comes to Oklahoma. Is Braden Willis about to have one of the biggest breakout seasons that we've seen? <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think he can. He I just had him on uh one of my like top few players that are I think are gonna have just massive seasons. He he can do it all, man. And they it, yeah. I love how Jeff Levy uses them in that system. They they play him all over the field. Um he's a true he can do it all, but they use him as kind of like a move guy or like an H back, yeah. which is which is awesome. Um, yeah, he he plays that. He plays the Ed. He plays the H. He plays the F. He moves around. Did you see the the pass where he went through the B gap to release to catch a touchdown? Yeah. I think that was the game against UTEP, and it's because in coach. I'm sure you, obviously you know this as well. Usually those guys, that's an outside release because you line them up as a wing. They line him up as the fullback, the fullback and then let him yeah. release inside and go. I just think he's going to have a huge year. I think he's going to be a big part of their success. I agree. I mean, I I, I would say this, and, and you alluded to it earlier. You know, Jeff and Hype. I'm, I'm sorry, Coach Heupel, have been together for a while, right? They're at, at in, in Central Florida. They yeah. they mm-hmm. both played there, right? So they've been boys for a long time. All those wide splits inside releases, play action, offensively, right. and then and then Levy being at, at Baylor, right? And and going to where like you said, they just stand out there. The receivers save their breath, right? And then when they go, they go. Um it's uh, I, I would say offensively, you know, they they have the tools to 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 win the league. Um I will see where they are Later on down the road, I think the Red River shootout again will be a, a, a telltale like we thought last year uh, until, you know, the, the end of the well, year. Hang on. Hey, before we we're going to we're going to continue to talk Oklahoma, but let's we haven't talked. We I at least I haven't got a chance to talk about this with, with especially with you guys. How good do we think Texas is? Go ahead, Adam. Texas with Quinn Ewers or without Quinn Ewers is a completely different different football team. There I mean, it, it's all, all all runs through the quarterback, man. And Quinn Ewers is special. I remember – I'll never forget where I was when I first saw Quinn Ewers' film when he was in high school. I remember we were sitting with our quarterback's coach, and and we were like, turn it on. And I was like, this is maybe the best high school quarterback film I've seen. Now, I haven't seen – I haven't been around forever, so I haven't seen a ton. But, uh, but I mean, he's that good. And uh, – I mean, it depends when he gets back. Like, if he's back for the Red River Shootout, that's a that that game becomes, you know, a, a completely different game than if he's not there. It's a big game yeah. for Oklahoma as well. If 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 he's if he's there, if he's not, so uh, I think Texas is is obviously, um, you know, the, the playing Alabama the way they did is impressive, and um, I think I think Texas. Uh, do we dare say Texas is Texas is back? I mean, I feel no. like we say, we say that every year, but <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we're not no, going to no. say that. <laughs> I, I, I want to ask you this, Coach Tumlin. They're better. They're better. They are, they're definitely you, better. Yeah. Do you think that there was a little bit of Nick Saban being like teaching his team a lesson? No, you don't go into a game like that. No, they, it's okay. a. Uh, I'll say this, and I agree with Adam. You know, for what they did, I don't. I think you've got to give Sark more credit. Okay. You lose a guy that basically when you made the decision that this guy is going to start the game, yep. less than two weeks, he's getting all the reps, right? And But to yes. that point, tell, 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 people, what that means. tell huh? people what that means. Tell so people what that means. Once you make means. that decision that the reps are not half, you're not splitting the splitting reps. Now, it might be, depending on how you do it, if the guy's going to play, the backup, it's going to be probably 75-25 at the There moment. we go. At the most, right? Get this guy ready to go, and then 
if, when he gets hurt in the first quarter and the way that it was handled on the sideline and the way and, and you get your backup gets, gets an ankle basically yes he did yeah before the half and that says a lot that team right now I feel like how he handled everything was they they believe in him too right they're riding high they're riding high I mean you got we, we talked about it two weeks ago I said hey watch out for those two 10 200 meter guys out there because nobody can cover them they're the fastest guys in football right they just ran by and yep. and the three running backs are really good uh I, I would say this that I think Texas right now they've had time right what you have to be aware of if you've been a part of this and 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 you guys have seen it at all different levels, right? Just like Notre Dame last week. Let's not let's not kid ourselves. Gary Patterson's been working on that game since since March. Bingo. Right? He's yeah. been locked right? in somebody's he's, closet. He's in the back room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the same kind of the same kind of deal that that, that Nick had at Alabama. That's yes. why Gary's there. Here's the game plan. They they executed it, right? Offensively, they feel good about it. All right. Be careful about what happens this week. Okay. Because there was a lot of energy spent. You yes. got a backup quarterback. Yes, yeah, good point. You know, it's, that's it, a great point. People, it, it, be careful. I mean, just think about what happened with Notre Dame, right? Right? Yeah. They spent the whole year, they spent everything on Ohio State. And it yep. looked like it last week. So we'll see this week what that looks like. Yeah, they've got for folks that don't realize they have UTSA coming up this week. And I, I'm a big Frank Harris fan. I, I absolutely love him. He's someone who watching him over the last four years grow as a quarterback has been really fun for me because he we we, we see him blossom and come into his own. I, he couldn't get the Houston win. We'll see if he's able to get the Texas win. We'll see what happens. But let's flip it back to Oklahoma. So we do think they're a contender in the Big 12. What's their ceiling? Is this a team that we can see in that top four? Remains to be seen. Okay. I, think. I, I, that's, I, I, you know, you can't lose a, a dynamic player, the, the players they lost. Do we and, like Dylan Gabriel, though? Yeah, I, I like him. I like him. But let's, let's be honest. I mean, is he, is he Caleb Williams? Eh, <laughs> that's up to y'all, right? But, that's, <laughs> so, but here's the thing. But, but they, did, they did great. They did great. My point being, let's see what happens here in the next couple of weeks. Because Caleb Williams still feels closer to Anthony Richardson than to me than Dylan Gabriel. Dylan Gabriel feels a lot closer to CJ Stroud or Bryce Young. And That's to fine. me, those are like I think there's value in that, right? Like he's a, Dylan Gabriel's the guy that can run, but he doesn't want to run. It doesn't have to, and he wants to make these choices. So Adam, like, let me ask you: you got a quarterback. You got Dylan Gabriel as your quarterback. Yeah. Are you more comfortable with Dylan Gabriel or Anthony Richardson or Caleb Williams? Which guy do you think is like he's going to hit me in my right spot? I'm also not going to my going to get my head taken off. Yeah, I mean, I, I think Dylan Gabriel is a good college quarterback. I think he's yes. good in that system and that scheme. I think it fits his ability well. And the other and guys just, have higher ceilings. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't yeah. see him. Um, anywhere close to Caleb Williams and what Caleb Williams can bring to an offense. I think, I think, again, I mentioned him earlier. I think Jeff Lebby is a great coach and play caller and fits that system around what he has really well. So I, I think he's able to, to work. And that's not to take anything away from Dylan Gabriel. Cause I, he's sure. a good college quarterback, but again, he's not, he's not Anthony Richardson who, he's you know, safe. Who, he, who, you know, had one of the freakish plays I've ever seen on that, on, on that play where he pumped the dude out. I mean, and then he's not he's not Caleb Williams. He's a, he's a safe play. Can he get um can he get Oklahoma to the big the, to the Big 12 title game? I think he can. Um but you know, they got they got a bunch of uh they got to go to TCU. Coach Sumlin mentioned the Red River game, play Iowa mm -hmm. State. Um so it's not they play Texas Tech who's playing some pretty good football right now too. So um yeah, I, I like I like Dylan Gabriel, but I don't I don't get like fired up about him. Okay, Coach Sumlin, I want to get you get you get in here. You got a team. One guy's a little reckless, but <laughs> high ceiling. The other guy is he knows what he knows all the little pieces. And we listen, we talked about this a little bit with JJ McCarthy and Cade McNamara, obviously. How do you make that choice? Well, it, it depends on your team, right? How's your defense? Right? 
Oh, yeah. Make sense? Yeah. And it's yeah. not just your offense as a head coach. You've got to look at the, the whole picture, right? It, what's our best chance to win? And if your defense is really good, got you can it. go with the safe guy, right? If your defense and you're playing an explosive team that you know that, that you know, we got to give this guy a chance, right? The, a guy that can, can get up and down the field, create things with his legs. Do they blitz? Are they a sit back and, 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 and let us run the ball, throw it, or drop 18? You know, right. are they, and it, it, what, what's their personality too? So um, the old adage, if you have two quarterbacks, you don't have one, that's not true anymore because everybody's yeah. recruiting quarterbacks at a high level. And, and so, you know, yeah. what, what that looks like personality wise for your team, that becomes the management piece, right? Can your team handle both of these guys knowing that right the way they're going to be in the game. What's going on guys. Rob Doster here, the founder of the field of 68 and the field of 12 media networks. I wanted to take a quick minute to let you guys know about an exciting new project that we have been working on for the last three months, the almanac an all encompassing preview of the 2022 23 college basketball season. We spoke with, every single division one head coach to give you a robust and accurate preview for all 363 division one college basketball teams. We have predictions for conference finishes for all 32 leagues. We have features on the best freshmen, the best big men, the breakout stars, the coaches on the hot seat, so much more. It is 600,000 words of sheer happiness for the college basketball fan in your life. The Almanac is going to be available for digital purchase on September 26th for just $19.99, but you can pre-order it today using the promo code HOOPS and save 20%. Just hit the link in the description below.